Hi, everyone. I'm Shelly with Art Matters. Um, thank you for joining us today. I hope you're ready to make some art and feeling good. And if you're not, then maybe by the time that we're finished making art, sometimes it helps us feel a little bit more centered and in our body. That's what we're here for. Um, I'm part of the Art Matters program. So before we get started, I just wanted to make sure that you have um, the materials that you're gonna need for what we're working on today. And then we'll go over some of who we are, what we do and what we're, what we're showing up for. So today is Sharpies and watercolor design um, inspired by Helen Hardin. So you'll just need um, some watercolor paper, which maybe you have received some kits from us, from Art Matters. And if you haven't, um, you can always uh, use what you have and then reach out to us and let us know. We are happy to share supplies that we have. Email us at artmattersam at gmail.com. So today you'll just need some watercolor paper, some a set of watercolors, a brush, watercolor brush, um, a container for water, a pencil, and a sharpener, and the paper towel. So now I'm going to share with you um, a little bit more and first starting with our land acknowledgement. So Art Matters is a collective of teaching artists, as I mentioned, which is myself, Hade and Landis, who maybe you've seen before um, in the videos or in person. And here we are based on Tiwa land, otherwise known as Albuquerque, New Mexico. New Mexico has been and always will be the ancestral homelands of the Navajo Nation, the 20 Pueblos, the three Apache Nations and the Ute tribe. It's always nice to um, hold in our heart space and our spirit space who has tended and lived in harmony with the land before us and uplift their ways and also connect with our ways and hopefully live in harmony within our space and time. So now I would like to share with you Our mission statement. Thank you for your patience with my technology. <laughs> um, the Art Matters Youth Arts Project is a group of teaching artists who bring authentic, engaging arts experience to Albuquerque youth and community. Our content is designed to engage you in art making and focusing on social justice, whole person health, community, joy, and Great engagement is at the core of our process. So speaking about our process, here are some of our community agreements, and you can always add in your own. Take a moment to connect with the people who are in the space with you and uh, what you would like to hold in your space for today. We like to uplift everyone's voice and make space for all respectful questions, concerns, and ideas to learn from each other. We remind you to respect yourself, respect each other, the tools and the materials, the ideas, the environment, and to throw glitter, not shade. We're here to really focus on the process rather than the product, the end goal. We're here to, our goal is for, as I said, to move through motions and bring ourselves to a place of, of centeredness, centered creativity. And so we have space for joy and to have fun. Be an artist and a maker, take risks, try something new and create. Hopefully you'll learn something about yourself today and maybe this person that I'm gonna share with you. Lift each other up and share, ask questions, listen, give thoughtful, productive feedback, collaborate, move up, move up. So we're here to uplift each other through art making. So let's get started with a warm up. Grab a piece of watercolor paper, a pencil, 
and a Sharpie. And then have your watercolors nearby. If you need to fill up your water container, go ahead and do that. So we're going to start by um, using actually the Sharpie. So we're not gonna think too much about making mistakes or anything. We're just gonna dive right in. So first to make a large organic shape. So organic shape is kind of like an amoeba blobby shape. Then let's make three circles. Um, you could do small, medium, large, overlapping or not. Then let's make a five triangles. And as you can see, I'm experimenting with the space and the size of my shapes. And then why doesn't, why don't you all call out a shape? I won't be able to hear you, but if someone in the room wants to call out a shape, I'll just do my own because <laughs> I'm not with you, sadly. And then let's add someone else wants to call out a shape. And I'm going to add like a prickly pear shape. So here we have a mix of geometric shapes and organic shapes. So once we have that, then we are going to get our watercolors open and let the fun begin. <laughs> if you're not having fun already. So we'll get our brushes wet. And just choose any color that you want, anything that's speaking to you. And then just begin by filling in the different shapes that you've made um, by overlapping this mixture of geometric and organic shapes. You can think about repeating the color. Maybe if you haven't, um, if someone wants to put on some music, but I encourage you to keep your earbuds for now um, open or off. So maybe when we get into the longer project, if you wanna listen privately to your music, but I wanna show you or tell you a little bit about this woman in just a moment. But I get it if you wanna zone out and go to your own space and just watch, that's, that's perfectly fine. We're here to support you in your process where you are today. And just have fun playing with colors. Now I'm doing the background. And a bit about watercolors. If you want to make a wash, which would be like a large space of uh, filling in, You'd use a lot of water and kind of make this juicy, let's see, am I in the, make this kind of juicy mixture. And if you ever want to mix colors, you can mix them over here on the side in your palette. So I'm going to make this purple, maybe add, no, this darker purple. So I'm custom making a purple. But a wash uses a lot of water and pigment mixed together. And so you'll see that will fill in a larger space. Add some water and you can even drop in a direct color into that space. And wherever you have put the water, it will act kind of like a barrier. So if I put the water up against these black lines and then I drop my pigment in there, it will flow just to the edge as long as I don't put too, too much, it'll flow just to the edge of where I put the water. And then I can bleed it out from there. So just continue here working in your space. Oh, and the other thing I was going to say, and maybe you know this already, but that's okay, is if you want to draw more of a line or have a more um, controlled watercolor technique, 
you'll just get the water kind of out of your brush by tapping it on the side, but it will have to be a little bit wet your brush and then just maybe use the tip in the pigment and then you can draw lines with your brush. Oops, just went through there. And just see what happens if you draw a line through a wash. So just here to experiment and see what happens. You can always start a new one or try this um, warm up or project another time if you wanted to have a different outcome. So while you continue to work on your warm up, I'm going to show you on the screen a some images of this woman's work, who is called Helen Hardin, as I mentioned, who was a person that lived um, on the Santa and was born in the Santa Clara Pueblo. And her mother was also born there and lived there. And her mother was a renowned artist. So she grew up um, learning art from a very young age. And she mixed traditional arts with modern and contemporary during her time during the 70s and 80s. And so as you can see here, the overlapping um, with the circle over the designs and some things are washes and some things are more like that drier brushwork. And she was using figures often in her work and animals and then geometric and organic shapes. Sometimes the colors were more natural and muted and then sometimes they were very um, bright, but you can see here the repetition of shapes and of colors. And then these um, abstracted portraits that look like to me, this looks like it could be two faces or one face. And a combination of light and dark. And then before we move on to our This, this is what we're going to do for our next one is to, if you finish with your warm up, you can continue working. You can pause this video at any time. You can check in with the group and see if you need a break at any time. Um, but I am going to grab another piece of paper. And I will just show you two, some of the ones that I had started on. I could find out how to put this underneath my camera. So here's one, which I'm trying to show you. Okay. <laughs> Thanks for your patience. And then this is one that I more finished. And what I did um, was to start with tracing a my water container. I traced the circles and then I added the designs inside. And so we can start by um, grabbing a piece of paper, another piece of watercolor paper. And then here I suggest starting with a pencil if you'd like, um, because we'll move into a little bit of a longer um, work, a little bit more intentional, but again, we're staying in the process, but I'm going to trace my water container. And this time, I think I'm going to overlap them. You do not absolutely do not have to trace your water con water container. If you wanted to have a starting point, maybe you want to trace something else, or maybe you just want to freehand a figure or a design or an animal. And then in this time, I think inside my shapes, I'm going to, I was really inspired by those two faces. So I'm gonna kind of work to make two faces here. But whatever design you're gonna do, 
Um, start with pencil here. And then once you have your design, how you want it, it's kind of like becoming like the sun and the moon. Then take your Sharpie and outline all of the lines or whichever lines you want to keep. Like, I think I'm going to, I'm going to move away from that, tracing that whole circle and using the inner profile. Sorry about that. And anyways, just creating whatever design that you would like. Again, organic shapes, geometric shapes, overlapping. Um, the foreground and the background. And while I'm working, I'm going to put up um, a couple of the images by Helen. And then we'll check back in. Again, like I said, pause at any time. I'll put this one up. And then I'll change it in a few minutes. And remember, once the washes or the lines of the watercolor that you painted dry, you can go over them. You can layer them if you would like. You can start by filling in big areas and then going back into the detail. And so, yeah, it's pretty interesting that her her daughter was also an artist. So uh, Helen died when she was very, fairly young at the age of 41. Um, and she had created many, many pieces of, of art combining, like I said, the traditional with contemporary styles. And we, before she had passed, she had a daughter, Margaret. And her, Helen's mother and Helen's daughter and herself were all artists. I'm going to see if I can find a picture. while you're working. I love researching artists. And um, let's see, I'll find you an image. Here's the one I was thinking of. So here you can see this is Helen and then her daughter in the middle and her mother. So from the Santa Clara Pueblo. So that's called a matril matrilineal heritage, um, passing the art artistry through the grandmother to the daughter and then to the granddaughter. 
So we can think about that too while we're working. What kind of things do, where do we come from? And who in our family um, do we get some of our gifts and talents from, maybe? Um, and yeah, what kind of things do we want to emulate from the people in our family? And sometimes we want to leave some things behind. But they had this artistry in their family and then passed along to, we can think about who do we want to pass on to, what we love and what our gifts are, and how do we want to show up for that person? How, I wonder how your um, paintings and designs are coming along. Do you like working with the watercolor and the Sharpie? I do. Um, actually, I think because I did that profile, I want to, I could do it with paint too, but I want to see what happens when I make this, these profiles with the black. So again, like we said in our Art Matters agreements, we can just try things out and be involved in the process. And we may or may not love what happened, but we're just here to create, try things out, learn about ourselves, learn about others. So I'm going to continue to work on this, but I think I'll sign off pretty soon here and say thank you so much for joining me. So here's mine in the middle of its process. I'm still working on it. And then this is the one that I had finished before. So I'm just trying out different things. But I hope you will continue to experiment with watercolor and Sharpies. I hope you enjoyed it. And please remember to email us, artmattersam at gmail.com with any of the art that you want to share with us, anything that you made with us today or anything that is inspired by what you've made or anything. We love to see the art of the youth and of the community. So thanks again for tuning in and making art. My name's Shelly and I'll see you next time. Bye.